Hey everyone, this is Abhas here from Soyz and in today's video we'll be talking about record set filters in Worksoft Certified. So during any test automation scenario, we need to minimize for the hard-coded values to keep our script as dynamic as possible. This not only helps us in developing the script right, but also helps us in maintaining the script at a later point of time. So as all of you are aware, we use variables for this purpose. So these are basic data containers which are used to store values which are used during execution by our script. But in real time scenarios, when we're talking about a long and complex script, it is very important to handle these variables carefully and efficiently. So in Worksoft Certify, layout and record sets can be understood as data structures where we keep the collection of variables which are to be used by a particular script. So by managing the variables in grouped group of record set, we are able to handle them more efficiently. So while using them, we can manage the data flow through our script efficiently without struggling to keep up with growing number of data as well as growing number of variables. So to increase the reusability of any script, we can choose to use the same layout and record set with different filter conditions. So now what these filter conditions actually are, let me explain you with help of a demo app. So this is a web account manager app. It is a basic web app. So let me just log in into this app. So as you can see, there are various fields in this app. So account name, contact. But what I want you to is visualize this as a particular portal of a particular company where a person who's logging in is supposed to fill these fields with his details. So in an ideal scenario, there would be hundreds and thousands of rows of data. Hence the need of automation of such a portal. So what will happen when we are developing a script for such a scenario, it is important that one single script is able to satisfy the need of all the particular data, and hence the need for reusability of variables as well as data. So now here, there are two very important conditions to be thought about. The first condition is that we want our script to be as dynamic as possible so that it can handle as many as data as possible, like I mentioned. And secondly, the person who is logging in into this portal, only his credentials are to be input in these fields. So if I'm supposed to log in into this portal, these fields should have the details. I'll be filling my name, my contact address and so on. And if suppose another person is logging into the very same portal with his credentials, then he'll be filling up with his details. So that is how we want our script to handle such a portal. Okay, so now let me open Worksoft Certify so that I can show you a script which is able to do exactly the same. So in the Worksoft Certify, this is my Worksoft Certify interface. So in my integrational test folder, I already have developed a script. So it, I have named it uh, E2E Web Account Manager so that the name is fitting. And I'll switch to the process as it was already open. So this is my basic process. So what it does is it basically logs into that particular portal. It will input the data. And in, while inputting the data, it will take care of the two conditions which I just mentioned you. So to begin with, as you can see, I have a layout and a record set attached to this process. So let's just see quickly what are the values in this particular layout. So this particular layout has a one single variable that is username. And let's see what are the value of these particular variables. So it has two values. First username is admin and the second username is admin one. Fair enough. And so on in the process, what I'll be doing is first of all, I'll be setting the context timeout of my certify so that it is able to respond properly with the web app, which I'm interacting. Then what I'm doing, I'm launching a utility process as the name suggests to log in into that particular web page with credentials. So obviously I have a record set in a layout, which will have the login credentials for that particular portal. So it'll have two fields. One is a username, second one is a password. And let me just see. So it will have the username and the password. The password would obviously be encrypted as per the security protocol. And the record set mode would be read only as we don't want to fiddle with the data because these login credentials are always, uh, you can say user sensitive data. So we don't want to change. And I have something called as record set filter. As you can see at the bottom of the page, there is something called as the record set filter and I've enabled it. So now let me explain what does a record set filter actually does. So as you can see, 
but before going on the second process what i have done i have basically assigned a variable name filter to the value username this value username by default it will be coming from this record set because it is the parent record set and it will be assigning that particular value to this particular variable so coming to the record set back to the record set what i have basically done is i have set a record set condition as you can see the condition is and that means it is a com uh, it is a and condition that username should be equal to filter so what happens when you open this record set filter interface you are greeted with all the variables which are there in your layout and selecting any of those variables you are able to assign a particular condition so the condition could be and condition or condition a combination of and and or condition as per your requirement so as you guys must be aware and is that both the condition should be fulfilled this and that or is a subjective thing either this or that so that is as very clear as the name suggests so these these are the various conditions that we could assign to a particular variable and the record set filter conditions so now what i'm forcing the certified to do is that only log in or only access the rows where the username is equal to the filter okay so meaning whatever the value of username is coming from the parent record that should equal to the value of the value of the variable filter and then only it will be able to access the row of data and it will access only those row of data where this condition will be met to it will skip the other rows of data moving on i have the second process so this is an add user process so add user process basically what it does is it handles this particular interface that means it will add a particular user with his details so for adding a user with his details again i want my second conditions to be met so my second condition being that the data of only that person should be filled who has logged in into the portal that means the user credentials should equal the value which are being inputted in the particular fields so for that i have a record set and as you can see in this particular record set ideally we will have thousands of rows of data but for our demonstration scenario i have taken up i guess four rows of data okay so as you can see there are four rows of data each one has a account name contact and so on and also a relative username with it so that means sam has a associated username admin123 with it david has a username admin1 tim has a username admin and similarly steve has a ad username a caps admin123 meaning these are the particular login credential of each of these users so if i was supposed to log in with admin1 i was to fill with the data of david and similarly with all other values so again what i have done is i have introduced a record set filter again the read mode would be only read because i don't want to change these data as well because they are user confidential and record set filter here is if the username is equal to the filter that means the username which is inside this layout is equal to the filter which i have assigned here in the very second step only read and access those rows of data that is what essentially i am instructing the certify to do and based upon that condition what will happen when i will be executing the script it will choose only those values that have an associated values related to that particular username in the layout so as you can see the end to end we have two usernames that is admin and a caps admin1 meaning that when we will be adding users when i'll be running this script so only those two people who have those credentials would be able to fill their data in this particular portal so that means admin that is tim and admin1 that is david that means only these two people data will be updated in the portal rest sam and steve would be ignored when we'll be running this program so without any further ado let me just execute this program for you no i don't want to save changes okay so now we are back in the execution screen i'll just let the entire scenario run end to end so now it will basically launch the internet explorer and it will enter the username and as and the password from the layout which has been applied in the parent record set so it will go with admin so now as you remember admin had value tim associated with it so it will fill the entire table with values that were there in the row of tim based on the filter condition that we set so it will basically enter some random values these are some demo values that i have chosen for the various fields and it will save the value now it will go on the account transaction and it will add up some sample values of date 
fund and shares. So the big, whole idea behind this portal is that we'll add some random values of purchase and redemption of three types, money, global and growth with number of shares. And then in the end, the number which are being entered here should be equal to the value which will be auto populated in account portfolio. So let's see that. Now it will switch to the account portfolio tab and it will compare between both the values. So now the value there and the amount here, the sum of the amounts should be equal to the value which is being generated in account portfolio. If both of them are equal, the condition would be supposed to be true and the portal will prompt me to exit. Now it will prompt for exit and now the first iteration is done. Now it will go for the second iteration that will it will enter the username as admin one and it will enter the credentials. And again, now, as you remember, David had the username admin one. So it will fill the entire rows of data with admin one that is David and it will repeat the entire process again. So now let me just stop the process since you have an idea about wow, what the process would actually do. So this is how a record set filter can be used to reu in terms of reusability. So the whole idea being that you can use the same script and same set of variables again and again to streamline the flow of data between them. Okay. So consider each filter as various criteria which are used on same set of data in various scenarios. So the whole idea being that if one variable has to deliver dif different, different values at different scenarios by calling upon different filter criteria, and as you are already aware about filter criteria that are and or, or a combination of and and or you can choose to do that. This helps us in increase the reusability of any script since we can choose to use the same layout and record set filter with different dif filter conditions. So that's pretty much it guys. Thank you for your patience and hope you guys got some clarity related to recorded filters now and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.